Haseem Rahman Jr., who I have condescendingly never referred to by his name until now. Why? Well, I respect something about him now. Haseem Rahman Jr. screwed that Jake Paul fight. And for some reason, that, that was a real point I felt compelled to make. It was to the point that I was calling people on Twitter. I was having my arguments. I was getting told that I was a nut hugger of Jake Paul. I mean, I must tell you, my whole life, I've never been called a nut hugger of anybody. So, so maybe that rubbed me the wrong way, and I don't want, I wouldn't want to admit to it. But there was something about it. I would finally direct message people, say, give me your number. And I was all day. I was calling and explaining to them what happened in New York, what happened between the verbal and written discussions of Raman and Jake Paul, and juxtapose that with the rule in New York, which is unique to New York about the weight discrepancy. Every single one of them, I won over. Hey, Chael, I didn't know that. Every single one of them, I won over. But it was important to me, right? It must have been important to me for some reason. I'm not going back on that. What Raman Jr. did was very wrong, and it was very salacious and egregious. It was truly, he was wrong. But hold the thought, right? Because before somebody gets labeled by us a criminal, a cheat, a crook, a liar, even if they meet the definition, before we as a society will label them that, we must know one thing, intent. Did they intend to deceive? Did they intend to gain an advantage? Did they intend to screw you over? I don't think Raman did. Raman's code and the way that he grew up is very, very different than my experience of the streets of Westland. Your word being your bond. I mean, it's, it's one of these things. It was just very different because the people surrounding him, he was very sincere in his beliefs that this was all Jake Paul's fight and that Jake should have accepted. He was very sincere. There was no intent. It is relevant. It was hard to stay mad at Raman. I am correct on that point about who botched the fight and who was wrong to do so. I am correct on that. It's hard to stay upset with him. He came out and did media. Lots of it. He spoke to anybody. He apologized. Never. He had a glimmer in his face the night. He was very confident in his false position. So not paying attention to him. I just watched him just a little bit. I'm just, just enough that I'm paying attention. What's he going to do from here? He's going to have a hard time doing business. Boxing is a fair, they're, they're used to some things. You are not going to do business in MMA ever again if you do that to a promoter. To my greatest rival who I despise, if you do that to him, you're not doing business with me. You're not gaining favor with me. It would be the opposite. So I just wanted to see how is this going to develop in the world of boxing. Well, Roman signed a contract to fight B. Tor Belfort. Let me stop you right there. Raman signed a contract to fight a guy who knocked out Evander Holyfield in 41 seconds. I mean, let, let, me, let me stop you right there. And I understand that the things that we learned about Evander and whether or not his participation should have been involved, nobody knew that going in. All you knew is that's the dude that beat up Mike and everybody else. That's the dude with the Olympic medals. That's a dude that's still in great shape. That's all that we knew going in. So imagine that walk, right? There's still a level of credit that has to be given. Not to mention there was a speed, there was a range, there was explosiveness, there was a power, there was a combination understanding demonstrated by Vitor. It's a hard fight because Vitor Belfort's a hard night out. Very hard night out. And Raman signed to fight him. I got to tell you, I'm interested in that. I do not think that MMA guys have a chance against boxers. I've never believed in that. Floyd Mayweather is going to dispose of Conor McGregor in less than three minutes. I, I firmly believed those things, even though it's being presented and the evidence is looking a little bit different than what my mind tells me logically should happen. It was all from personal experience. I've gone with tons of, fought tons of boxers. They won't even put a hand on me. 
I'll be the one controlling them right before I take them down. Well, they had a fear of the takedown. It was something totally different. I sparred stand-up only in my whole life with one real guy. One real guy. And it was Joe Schilling. And it was a frightening experience to be in there with somebody that understood rhythm the way that he did. It was a fright. This was in 2012. I remember it still. Remember techniques. I learned a lot of it. I'm just sharing for you. This is why I go, hey, MMA guy, MMA guy can't go with a boxing guy, not just in stand up. Vitor is different. Vitor Belfort had considerations in the 90s. I believe it was 96. If I'm wrong, it was 2000 of making the Olympic team for Brazil and boxing. There's other reports out there that he actually pursued that and came in second. That Vitor Belfort was an Olympic alternate in boxing. Those reports are out there. I just never asked Vitor. I, I can't confirm them for you. My point is he's different. I'm just interested. That's my only point. I'm just purely, I would think that Vitor would, would, would dispose of Paul very quickly, just to use that as an example. But I'm not certain that he will of Raman. Like, Raman gets pretty big. You know, he'd get in there about 228 pounds. He's been in some level of focus in training camp. He's got some experience. I mean, it's, it's one of these things where that match, to me, is interesting. And the fact that Raman took it has showed a massive courage, not to mention he used the debacle as a springboard and elevated himself. I think he's fighting Vitor in a main event somewhere. That part I could have wrong. And then Raman came out and said he wanted to fight in the PFL by the end of the year. Now, a couple of things on that. Why PFL? What is his relationship? Why did he pick that organization specifically? Most guys will say MMA. They'll start from there. No, he didn't say that. He said, he said in the PFL. And moreover, by the end of the year, guys, get a calendar out. We ain't got a lot of time left, which I appreciate. Most important thing on any deal is a date. Number one, most of I guys, I'm going to give you a million dollars, and you could trust me. Chael's a man of his word. Well, then you, you get the date. You know, that's going to be a penny a year for the next hundred million years, right? I mean, the whole thing is the date. So he's going to do it right now. I remember when Fury was running this shtick about I'm going to do MMA. Like, it was a good bit, and he was even going to the practice rooms, and he was working out with guys. Darren Till comes to mind. He was working his ass off, and he wanted to work with McGregor. It was very, very good for the media and marketing. I just thought there was one miss, which is he was going to do this in 2025, and he started this bit in 2018. We go, man, that's nothing to look forward to. Nobody's ever invited me to a party in my life that I got excited about when I was seven years away. I just thought that was a miss. I'm just bringing that to you. So when Raman says he's going to do it, oh, by the way, that's interesting. And why not Vitor, by the way? Why not? If they're going to go out and box, I do like the idea of them doing MMA, particularly if Raman wins the boxing. If Raman loses the boxing, let's be all done here. But there's something about that that's a little bit fun for me. One championship did what they called a mixed rules match. It was Raw Tang versus Demetrius, but they're going to do kickboxing one round. The next round is going to be MMA. That's how they're going to, and then constitute that into an entire contest. It was fun. They sold out an arena. It was a huge deal. There's something about it that's fun. Can we just agree on that? So I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know about Vitor and Raman. I don't know about this whole thing. I'm just here to pay off the Raman. His name is Hasim Raman Jr. He has made the most of an opportunity. He is bouncing back. And he's going to do some pretty heavy lifting. Vitor Belfort, it's a tough night out for anyone. 